Good morning, everyone. I am a neuroscientist, and I study the human brain, or the time machine in your head. So why a time machine? Because your brain allow you to retrieve memory. You go back in the past, you know, this morning, yesterday, decades ago, as well as project into the future what you're going to have for lunch, who you're going to talk with, where your next vacation are, imagining the future. So here is a visualization after a scan of a human brain, a real human brain, and I have projected on it real region of the human brain that are specialized for vision. So this is a map of the most important region that are activated when you open your eyes or you move your head, open your eyes again and see something new. So let's go through what those regions do. The orange region are specialized for face and people perception. Both people you know, as well as new people you meet every day. The nearby yellow region are specialized for object perception, more particularly the small object that you can carry in your hand, move around, like your glasses, of course, your smartphone, your bag, when you put on your shoes, and so on. Thousands of small objects you can manipulate every day. The green region are more specialized for place perception. When you wake up in the morning, you open your eyes, you recognize your bedroom. You have to thank those green regions. They're also there to tell you you're in the street, entering in a cafeteria, or also that you're basically lying on a large couch. Because those space regions are also responding to larger objects, where you put your body in, like the car, and so on. The yellow one are for the small object. Then you have this little red region in the middle of the brain. It is called the amygdala. The amygdala responds to novelty, new signal, warning signal. Could be a voice, a sound, somebody you never saw. Oh, here, how are you doing? The amygdala is there, like kind of a warning signal. Now, the purple and the blue region that are well hidden inside the brain, protected below all the surfaces of the other region, are dedicated to memory and prospection. You retrieve memory and you project into the future. And in a few minutes, I'm going to tell you more about how those regions, that I call literally the motor of the time machine, work. So now that we have seen in space, the region involved in vision. What about time? So we are living in a dynamic world. Everything is changing. So we could ask, as a neuroscientist, as all those regions activated, burgeoning at the same time, when you move your head, open your eyes, a new image comes in, or are they activated in a certain sequence? And when? And which one play together? which one play against each other, because there is a network. So let's add a time to this static picture. I'm going to show you a movie of activities in the human brain every millisecond for about 500 milliseconds when our observer opened their eyes on new imagine, images where we were, while we were scanning their brain. Half a second is both short and long. Let's experience half a second. Those images were shown for half a second. But you remember them. So we had Marilyn Monroe, the man on the moon, and the sunrise. Actually, the sunrise in Berkeley. Some of them you saw. Some of them are new. And you felt that you could see a lot of the details. And that was half a second. So here is a view of the same brain, three different viewpoints. You may just choose to look at one, maybe the left or the middle one. 
and there is a timer. The timer will ramp up every millisecond when I click. So we recorded reaction of the human brain. Starting zero is when the image is shown. I have to tell you it's going to take about 60 milliseconds to start seeing something. Both our measurements are coarse because we are working in a non-invasive way with very safe scanner looking at the human brain. They are the same scanner used in hospital. We can all do it safely. And it takes some time from the image to go from the retina to the brain. Okay, timer has started. 10, 11, 15, 20 milliseconds. So around 60 milliseconds, you're going to see some responses in this part of the brain, which are the visual part of the brain. Okay? Around 100 milliseconds, you're going to have the vision, and this is also high level vision over here. Those two regions are actually the one about place perception. Because all the objects you saw, Marilyn, the man on the room, the moon, the trees, were in a place. So around 150 milliseconds, there are more regions coming in and out. 200, I can tell you the job is done. Your brain knows the type of image and the details about it. There's people, no people, animal, and so on. 250, you can barely make one eye movement. You cannot move. Your brain knows. You don't know yet what the images are about. So it will take from 350 to half a second for you to have the haha -ha of recognizing, oh, that's a friend. Oh, that's a funny dog. Oh, that was Marilyn Monroe. It takes some time. So both that time is short and long, but we can measure in the brain what's going on. And so with uh, funding from the Department of Defense in my lab, we record at the level of millisecond and millimeter, human brain, people looking at things, hearing sound or touching object. And we develop new software technology to create those visualization. And we can go back and see more what's going on over here, over there, and so on, a different part. So there's a lot, a lot of computer science going on in this big data mining. So the two demo I showed you, which is one out of the lab, are for very short time. But for us evolving in the world, things move in time forward all the time. So things happen immediately. If your coffee is going to drop on the floor, you better see it and react immediately. So everything is ready in your brain to do that and your limbs and so on. But you can also predict or know what's going on at the short term. A lot of things going on in the world are about a few second length long. So that's where your brain calculate what it see and make a prediction at a few seconds. As well, longer term, when you're going to the restaurant, you, you look at the menu, you know that you're going to get food. How do you know that? Well, you take this for granted. But that's called a prediction. So you go into your memory. And actually, you go into the hippocampus, which is one of the structures hidden in the brain. You have two, one on the left, one on the right. There's a backup. And this is a structure that takes the information coming in, visually or auditory information, and take the decision, yes, I keep it in memory, no, no, yes, no, really deciding a lot about what's coming in. Other regions participate, but hippocampus is kind of the boss. And there's two very interesting things or very important things to know about this structure. So the hippocampus help encoding information, go back to the past and predict the future. What happened without hippocampus? People with amnesia might have an hippocampus damage for some times, but also some patients might have the hippocampus removed. And in those cases, you're amnesic. However, you have a huge loss of time understanding and a dramatic compression of time without the hippocampus. So there was this uh, 
very famous patient in neuroscience. His name is H.M., Henri Molaison. And in 1953, he was about 25, he got the two hippocampi removed by surgery in order to save his life. HM is known for not putting any new things in memory or remembering the past. But what is less known, and there are data out there, is that without the hippocampi, he suffered a dramatic time compression. One year for us would have been about three hours for him. So, many regions go into the timing of telling you what's coming next, but the hippocampus is one of the important ones. Now, the second important thing, the last thing I'll tell you about this structure, it's actually a baby neuron factory, literally. Every day, your two hippocampi, they are about the size of a finger, produce hundreds to thousands of new neurons that are going to be excited by new information coming in. So they are only responding and growing if you give them novelty. What's novelty? Many things can be novel. But literally, learning new things, taking a new path to work, meeting new people, uh, in, I mean, reading new things and so on, all those help the hippocampus and those neurons to grow. So this time machine motor has the capacity of regeneration. It, it's, there's only two regions of the brain who create new neurons, and this is one of them. So, in order to keep the hippocampus healthy, I'll say we should all sleep eight hours, decrease sugar, and learn new things so that the time machine keeps going healthy. Thank you. <laughs>